Good morning. Welcome, Bridge of Hope family. We are so glad that you've joined us today for service. At Bridge of Hope, we strongly believe that God is going to do great things in us and through us as we worship and fellowship virtually together. We recognize that in today's world of technology, you could have chosen almost anywhere to worship and attend service today. But instead, God chose you to be here with us. And for that, we say thank you. We encourage you to take just a few moments to digitally greet your neighbors in the comments section. We also encourage you to take just a few moments to share this link so that your friends and family can also be in on all the great things that are happening at Bridge of Hope Church. Please bow your heads and pray with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to once again come together and worship and praise you. Lord, we know that there are a lot of people out in the world today that are struggling whether it be with a sickness, an addiction, maybe they're struggling with grief, or just something else that's going on in their lives. And they need you, God, to intervene on their behalf. They just need a simple touch from you. Lord, we ask that you heal them, that you touch them, that you bless them, Lord Jesus. We ask that you Bless our pastor today as he brings forth the message. We ask that you give us open ears and open hearts to hear it today and for those in the future that may be listening. Lord, we just ask all these things in your name. Amen. Good morning, Bridge of Hope, and welcome to another Sunday service. We are grateful to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. And we're going to be worshiping the Lord with a song that is um, pretty well known. So I want you to worship along with me. And men, remember that this is not a concert, right? We're not just um, spectators. We are uh, joining together and worshiping the Lord. No matter where we are, we can lift our voices, lift our praise, lift our hands. Amen. For the Lord is worthy. And that's what this song talks about. Blessed be your name, Lord God. In the good times and in the bad times, he is worthy. Amen. Take away, you give. 
your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Sing it out with me. things that we don't understand, even through pain, Lord God, that seems beyond our pain threshold, you are capable, Lord God, you are able to sustain us, and we will praise in the middle of it, we will praise through it, and we will see your glory in our lives, we believe it, let's continue worshiping the Lord this morning, church, God bless you.
Bridge of Hope family. My name is Austin Stone Street. This is my beautiful wife, Erin Stone Street from deep in the heart of Texas, where God so graciously gave us dinosaurs that turned into natural gas and oil products. <laughs> uh, we welcome you here today. Uh, we're so thankful that we get this time to serve, uh, you know, in communion with the Lord. We get to worship together. And for those joining online, we welcome you here today to the service as well. I'm going to turn it over to my wife for reading us in scripture. Hey, the scripture I've chosen today is Isaiah 25 and 1, and it states, O Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things, thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Uh, I think this is resonating with me right now because uh, I want to be in that body of believers, that remnant of believers that says that even though life experiences might be different or difficult or whatever the case may be right now, I choose to glorify the Lord and I choose to believe that the counsels of old are righteousness and truth and that what he says will be done. And pray? Just please. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for all that you've given to us. Thank you for all the, the gracious blessings that you've put in our life. Thank you for all the struggles that we don't realize are blessings yet to come. Thank you for, for all that you do for us, not only every single day, but the works in our lives that we don't even see that go untold, that are there surrounding us, protecting us, lifting us up. God, we'd ask that you, you touch the heart of anyone that's out there today that needs your touch. The sick, the elderly, 
anyone in need, anybody that's been displaced for work, affected with sickness, or just weighed down by the stresses of life. God, we'd ask that, that you touch each and every one of us that are here today to show more of your will in our lives so that your light can shine through us. God, we pray for those that don't know you. We pray that they find you and they realize that the salvation in, in our Lord and Savior is a freeing and an ultimate sacrifice that you paid for us on our behalf that we get the benefit of every single day that you so freely give away. God, we ask that you you touch and you be with every single person here. We, we ask that you watch over the Bridge of Hope family and we ask that you be with us every single day and guide every one of our steps so that we can let the world know that living through Christ and letting your love shine through us is the way and a better way. In your name we pray, amen. amen. The stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart. Good morning, Bridge of Hope. I hope you're doing well this morning. Right now it is, is a time for us to worship the Lord together in our giving. And today's offering will be going toward the general expense of the church, but also remember your tithes and any other funds that you would like to give to um, toward the ministry here at Bridge of Hope. I want to remind you of a verse, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. It reads, remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. Uh, we want to uh, just reflect the generosity of God by also being good stewards of what he has given us. Uh, by giving. And when you give uh, to Bridge of Hope, uh, it goes to the ministry. Um, it goes to the work of God uh, through the church, uh, where we want you to also be involved in the work of God uh, in your neighborhood, in your area. Uh, but we thank you for supporting Bridge of Hope. So there are two ways that you can give. The first is you can give online at bridgeofhope.church uh, or through the uh, Alexio app. You may also give, the second way, you can give via mail uh, and mail your gift to P.O. Box 370, Pleasant Garden, North Carolina, 27313. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the grace that you have shown us, for your love, for your kindness toward us. Uh, help us, Lord, to see your hand at work in our lives. Help us to see your hand at work in the lives of those around us, Lord, and how you want to use us for your ministry, for your kingdom. Please bless us and help us, O oh God, where we are sick, where we are hurting, where we are uh, in discomfort, where we need your comfort. We look to you, O oh God, and we thank you for giving us that. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, Bridge of Hope, and everyone in the Piedmont Triad across North Carolina, North America, and around the world. Welcome again to Bridge of Hope service. So glad to be with you today. Pray that you've been blessed through the songs and the prayer and the giving 
And I just want to encourage you, let's look to the Lord through the word. Hopefully last week you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Thank God for those I shared it with. And I pray that you had one as well. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. is As you can imagine, we are running into the Christmas season. For unto us a child is born. And to us, a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. And on the throne of David, and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it or will do this. May God add the blessing to the reading of his word. I would like to speak to you today on the topic how to celebrate the first and second advent. How to celebrate the first and second advent. Let's bow our heads. Father, we rejoice because our king has come and our king is Jesus who you have sent the son of your love. And so, Father, I just pray that you would bless us today as we reflect on who Jesus is and we reflect on the grace of God revealed through his incarnation and through his triumphal return. May you be exalted, Jesus. May we think deeply about the significance of Christmas and the parousia, the second coming of our Lord. And may we follow you and exalt you and look forward to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So without question, we are now approaching uh, what I would call the biggest holiday season of both the secular and the Christian calendar. That is Christmas. We know Christmas is big because retail stores have been planning for this season since July when Amazon had their pre-Christmas sale. Think about this. Stores were celebrating Christmas in the summer. My goodness, that's how big Christmas is. Now, for the believer, we must be super excited because we get what they would call in stores Two for one. You know, you go to a grocery store and they say, buy one, get one free. They call it B-O-G-O, -O, buy one, get one free or two for one. And that's what we get when we celebrate Christmas because we celebrate not only the first advent, the coming of Jesus, but the second one as well. Look at Isaiah chapter nine, verse six and seven. So you see where it starts off says, but unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And we know that this refers to the birth of Jesus Christ. In fact, this is repeated in the Gospel of Luke, where Gabriel appears to Mary and tells him, I'm going to give you a child, a son, and his name is Jesus, and you're going to call him Emmanuel, for he shall save his people from their sins. He will be God with us. But we not, but in this passage, not only does it speak this Christmas passage not only speaks about the birth of Jesus, but notice it speaks about the reign, the victorious reign of Jesus Christ, the Messiah that is eternal. Listen, it says, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. So it's as if already we are already in this victorious time where the son 
is reigning in his fullness. And it says on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. And so when he talks about justice and righteousness, he talks about the reign of David sitting on David's throne. It's talking about a time where he has vang- he has come and he has brought victory. He has brought righteousness. He has judged the world. He has come in his power. And so we have both the first advent and the second. Listen, we hear of the first and second advent also in our songs. Think about joy to the world. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. And what does it say? Let earth receive her king. And so when it's and and it's an allusion both to his first coming and to his second coming, he is coming. He is coming as the king. Let all the earth receive him. How do we celebrate both the first and the second advent? I would say, based on the scripture, we celebrate it personally. Take it personally. It is for you, for unto us a a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And you should celebrate him because his government increases and it has no end. This is a blessing for you. The coming of Jesus Christ, the incarnation where Jesus came in the form of man and he's still God. This is for us. It is in that form that he died on the cross as man that he might bear our sins. And he is coming again, the glorious Lord with all power and authority. He's coming for you and me. We're not afraid of his coming. We're thankful for his coming. We're thankful for the archangel. We're thankful for the sound of the trumpet because he's coming for us. So I want you to sing. But sing personally, giving thanks to God for the first and second come. This is coming. This is your savior. He is your king. The kingdom of God is yours. Make it personal, church. Pray to him. Look back and look forward because the incarnation and the second coming is for us. It is for you. Celebrate it personally. Secondly, I believe we must celebrate, not just personally, but we must celebrate with our minds, with our imaginations. I want you to look at this. We've got to use our minds and our imaginations as informed by the word of God. I want you to be with Elizabeth and Mary as the Holy Spirit feels baby John the Baptist in the womb of Elizabeth. I want you to mentally imagine what it was like when the shepherds were in the open field and the heavens, the skies are ablaze with the glorious presence of the angels singing to the glory to God in the highest. I want you to listen to the archangel blowing the trumpet and how everything stops because the sound shakes the heavens. And I want you to look at the clouds and imagine Jesus riding them like a chariot, riding them like a car, riding them down to us. Church, use your imagination. Use your imagination and think, put yourself back in the scriptures and think about what it was like at the beginning of the incarnation of Jesus and think about what it will be like at the end. Now, here's what I want you to do now. I want you to imagine his reign from the end to the beginning. What do I mean? I want you to think about what it would be like when the Lord comes with a shout with the archangel and the dead in Christ will rise. 
I want you to be with them in the air as you're rejoicing that those who have died in the Lord are being united with their bodies and they're coming up to heaven to meet him in the air. And then I want you to uh, go back and be in the heavens when Christ is sitting on the throne and the Bible says he ever lives to make intercession for us and the angels are around him, worshiping him as he is interceding on our behalf, praying for our strength, praying for our victory. Now I want you to rewind when the Holy Spirit is sent upon the church for the first time in the book of Acts and, and, and the spirit comes down like a form of cloven tongues of fire and the anointing rests upon all the people. I want you to go back to Pentecost and then I want you to go back to when he ascends to heaven. So he is already resurrected and now he goes to heaven where he is reigning there. Now go back and I want you to be at Calvary where he's on the cross. I want you to go back where he's healing and he's delivering, he's casting out devils. Now I want you to go back to the birth. Go back to the inn in Bethlehem where they had no room and he's born and he's placed in a manger. I want you to you, you celebrate by taking yourself and going back and live through the second coming all the way back to the first coming. And I want you to see why each one of these experiences is so beautiful, so powerful, so worthy of our praise, so worthy of our celebration. Church, we celebrate the first and second advent by going back in our hearts and remembering what each of these moments have accomplished on our behalf. You know why this is so important? Because you've got to long for it. We, we, we get to Christmas and we long for the trees and we long for the decorations and we long for gifts. Come on, you know how the kids are. And it's not just kids, it's adults too. But the Lord wants us to long for his coming. Long for it. And how do we long for his coming? Listen, I'm reminded of what Antoine de Sant said, he said, if you want to build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them the long for the endless immensity of the sea. Listen, if we're going to long for the coming, we're going to have to long for the peace that he brings. We're going to have to long for the deliverance of our weakness. We're going to have to long for the great mercy that he ushers into our life. And how, and that's how we long for the second coming. Do you know why many today are not longing for Jesus to return? Because they have forgotten what the second coming of Jesus does. But I'm telling you, if you remember the first, and how wonderful it is that he came to save us, then you can look forward to the second where he comes to deliver us again from this lowly flesh, this broken world. And he delivers us into an eternal kingdom that will never end. Long for the Advent Bridge. Long and remember and imagine what it's like to be at every step. We celebrate also by believing in miracles. Today, we celebrate the first advent and the second advent by believing in miracles. See, we celebrate the advents by thinking through, wait a minute, God came down in the form of man beginning as a child, beginning as a seed in the womb of Mary, a woman who did not know a man, and she's miraculously pregnant. And this child that was born to her without the semen of a man becomes the Lord 
who dies upon the cross, who delivers us from our sins. I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the fact that Jesus rose from the dead, was ascended on high. He's reigning in the heavens right now, right this very moment. And he's coming back again and he's going to ride on the clouds. In fact, Revelations chapter one tells us, behold, he comes on the cloud and every eye in the world will see him. That is a miracle. Well, if we believe in the first advent, we believe in the second advent, then we need to believe in the God who still does miracles. If he can make Jesus born of a virgin and if he can ride the clouds, then what else cannot God do? Can he provide? Can he heal you? Can he speak to those who don't know him? I want to tell you, Jesus can do anything. Look at Genesis 18, verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you. And about this time next year, Sarah shall have a child. I'm here to tell you when we look at the first advent and we look at the second advent, we are reminded that God can do anything. Do you know today God can do anything? Look at Jeremiah 32 and 27, where the prophet says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. And he asked the question, is anything too hard for me? I want you to know no matter what it is, no matter how bad it is, no matter how far gone the situation, no matter how disruptive it is, there's nothing too hard for God. Look at Matthew 19 and 26. But Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Remember the coming of Jesus. Remember the second coming of Jesus and know all things are possible. Ask God for a miracle today. Ask God to save your spouse today. Ask God to deliver you. Ask God to heal your friend. Ask God to provide. Ask God to change the decision. Ask God to overturn the case. Nothing is too difficult for God for if he can be born of a virgin and if he can come back riding on the cloud and judge the world, then God can do anything. Luke 1, 35 through 39 says, and the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren for nothing will be impossible with God. And listen to what Mary says. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. Oh my God, this is how we celebrate Christmas. We say, Lord, according to your word, whatever you say, that's what it's going to be. God, if you gave me a word, I'm going to believe it. it's according to your word. I'm going to hold on to it. Listen, if we're going to believe in Christmas and if we're going to believe in the second coming, then we got to believe all things are possible with God even now, even now. Lastly, how do we celebrate? We celebrate by telling others about the advents we call people to our house and we say celebrate with us jesus has come he's born of a virgin come on celebrate celebrate on december 19th at the bridge of hope church we're going to be dressing up on December 19th. Mark your calendars, come into the sanctuary. We're going to be dressing up. We're going to be dressing up as Magi, as shepherds, as Gabriel, as blind Zechariah, as pregnant Elizabeth, as the angelic host. We're going to be celebrating and dressing up as them, remembering the Lord. We want people to remember the story. We want to tell people the true story of Jesus. But not only do we want to tell them the true story of Jesus, we're going to tell others about Jesus's first coming and his second coming by us living 
like he's coming again. We're going to live holy. And people are going to ask, why won't you curse? Why won't you get drunk? Why won't you retaliate? Because the Lord is coming again and he's coming soon. He came the first time. That's why Christmas is here. And Christmas reminds us the Lord is coming again and earth will soon receive her king and those who think he's not coming they will hear the sound of the archangel they will see the Lord coming on the clouds oh yes we're going to live like he's coming soon we're going to live and be ready do you hear me church we're going to tell others by living ready and warning them and encouraging them. Be ready. Be ready. Tonight may be the night. This may be the year. The Lord is coming soon. Re Christmas reminds us he's coming again. First Thessalonians 5, 2 through 8 says this for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night while people are saying there is peace and security then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and they will not escape but you are not in darkness brothers for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of light children of the day we are not of the night or of the darkness so then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober for those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. We tell others by being ready and warning and encouraging others. Live like you know he's coming. Live like you know he came. Live like you know he's coming again. This is how we celebrate the first and the second Advent, and we must do them together. Oh yes, Christmas is one of the greatest times of the year because it reminds us of his first time coming and it lets us know he's coming again. Will you pray with me? Will you join me in prayer? Thanking God for coming because he came to save us. But will you also pray, Lord, help me to be ready. Help me, Lord, to be yielded to you to be surrendered, adopted, changed in my heart so that when you come, you are coming for me, not against me, but for me, that I might be with you forever. That's why Jesus came, that he would be Emmanuel, God with us. And at his second coming, he's coming to be the reigning Lord with us. We want to meet him in the air. But if we are not ready, when he comes, he comes as the judge. He comes with a justice. And my friend, if he's coming and you're not with him, then that would mean you're against him. Christmas and the second coming should not make us uncomfortable it should make us expectant joyfully expectant and that's why we celebrate if in fact we know the lord father today i pray while the world rejoices in all of the festivities of a secular holiday we celebrate father your son Jesus, the King, born of a virgin, died in our place, was raised from the dead, ascended on high, 
is interceding on our behalf right now and is coming soon. Lord, for all who hear me and they are not ready for him to come, may the fear of God come on their heart that they would not take this for granted. May they instead surrender that they might rejoice when he comes because he would be coming for them who loved him. Oh God, may we love you and know you. May we look forward to you because the first time you came was for our salvation and the second time you're coming to take us back to be with you forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hello, Bridge of Hope friends and family. Thank you for joining us today for worship and service. Let me share with you some upcoming events and announcements that we would love for you to be a part of. Our adult Bible study will be held on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Our seniors Bible study will also be held on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Our middle schoolers will hold their Bible study on Sunday at 5.30 p.m. We are now back to one in-person service at 10 a.m. Pre-registration and temperature checks are not required. However, we do ask that you wear a mask until further notice. We welcome you back as you feel comfortable doing so. All of this information and more can be found within our weekly newsletter, which comes out every Tuesday. So if you're not already receiving that, make sure you sign up so you don't miss out on all of the great things happening at the bridge. We would also love to hear from you and connect with you. So connect with us via any of our social media platforms. And as always, thank you for joining and have a blessed week. Thank you, Sister Jessica and everyone that's been a part of our uh, service today for the singing, for the interceding and giving and all of the encouragement and the testimonies. We are thankful to the Lord. I want to let you know that uh, our uh, adult Bible studies are complete for the year. The seniors are almost completed, but the adults have finished their last Bible study series for the new year, for this year, 2021. And we will begin a new series in January after our 21 days of fasting. So for the month of December, uh, look out for the special dates where we're going to be gathering in person uh, to just celebrate together uh, the coming of our Lord. And so looking forward to seeing many of you in person on a Wednesday night, just thanking God for bringing us together. We want to thank all of our workers throughout this year. The Lord has been good to us. So let us end today with a prayer of thanksgiving as we begin this new Advent season. Father, thank you today for allowing us to see the year of our Lord 2021. Here we've come through so much, uh, but we are seeing again the goodness of God. Thank you for allowing us to celebrate Jesus' birth, Jesus' incarnation, our Lord coming as King. And I pray that your people would rejoice and that we would not keep this joy to ourselves but we would share our love and joy with others. Bless us and keep us. Cause your face to shine upon us. Bless us and prosper us with shalom, the peace of God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Merry Christmas, church.